Hi, this quick video is to, created to help you calculate the reactions on a beam using SolidWorks. So SolidWorks can help us check our homework solutions. We're going to create a model of this beam as shown here. This is from problem set 2 in MC300 during the semester 17-1. Just using it as an example uh, to, to see how to calculate the reactions for, in this case, a roller and a pin. Go to SolidWorks, create a new part. We're going to be running this, this uh, model using the simulation tools and weldments tools. So go ahead and make sure that those two tabs are showing. If they're not, just right click on any of the other tabs and make sure that you've selected weldments and simulation. All right, weldments are based on sketches, so let's just create a sketch of this problem on the front plane. I'm going to create it using lines. Now what you'll notice is I'm going to draw this in two pieces and the reason I'm doing that is we have a roller at this point and it's going to be easier to define fixtures if we make our sketch in pieces. So that's it, that's the line. Now we need to dimension it accordingly so we've got 2 meters from A to B and 10 meters from B to C. So let's use smart dimension two meters and ten meters. Now you'll notice it has automatically calculated it in some other units. It looks like we're working in IPS which is inches, pounds, and seconds. So we can change that to meters, kilograms, and seconds if we wish. Alright, so we've got the sketch made. Time to create the weldments. We're going to create structural members. For this analysis, it does not matter what we choose here for the type, so I'm just using a 4x4 four by, four by quarter inch square tube. You can choose anything else. Say OK. And now we've got the structure made or built, so let's create the simulation. So we go to simulation, drop down the study advisor, click on new study, and it's a static analysis. Since we're doing this to calculate the reactions, I'll just name the study reactions. And there we go. Now we see a couple of different things pop up. We see that we've got a purple dot and a green dot. A purple dot is a joint that is connecting two structural members, while a green dot is a joint at the end of a structural member, therefore not connected to anything else. All right. Now we'll notice that these this part is composed of two structural members and if we right click on any of them, either of them, we'll notice that it's defined as a beam as opposed to a truss. A truss is a special type of structural member that has only pins at, it, at its ends. In this case we're looking at a beam and we would like to have it be connected at, to each other at this point and so we're going to call it a beam and give it rigid connections at its ends. Now those are, those are rigid connections with relation to other members, not with relation to the supports, uh, support conditions. So don't get those too confused. So we'd, we're not changing anything, so we can just cancel that. Now SOLIDWORKS wants us to define a material, uh, otherwise it won't run the analysis. It doesn't really matter what we pick, so I'm going to just pick the default alloy steel, say apply, say close. Now let's define those fixtures. So we right click on fixtures and say fixed geometry. And we want a pin, let's review this sketch, we want a pin over here at C. And so we're going to use immovable, which is going to restrain it against translation but will allow rotation. We'll click the little thumbtack to keep this here for a second. Click OK, so we've defined that joint as pin. Now this joint needs to be defined as a roller, so we're going to use reference geometry. We're going to base everything off of the front plane, which is where we built this model. And we want to restrain it against vertical translation and also against normal to the plane. We want to prevent any kind of out of plane distortion. Click OK. Now we actually also want to do, want, want to restrain this node, which is here on this overhang, point A. We're going to restrain it in the front plane 
against out of plane deflection or, or translation. We want to make sure that any any bending that this beam does occurs in that front plane. So we can unpin that, click the green check mark and we're done. Now it's time to apply loads. So we're going to right click on external loads, click on force, and we're going to apply loads at a joint. So we're going to click on this joint and then select this one right here. We're going to define our joints again with relation to a plane. We'll choose the front plane. We're working in SI units. And at this joint A, we've got a 10 kilonewton force at an angle. Now you'll notice in SOLIDWORKS, we can only define things in these three orthogonal directions. So we've got a force acting in that direction and a force acting in this direction. And we see that we've got arrows appear at that joint. We need to reverse the direction of this one so that we've got the components of this force shown. And now let's give them magnitudes. So just using our geometry, we can see that we've got four fifths of 10 kilonewtons acting vertically and three fifths of 10 kilonewtons acting horizontally. So that's eight kips, or sorry, kilonewtons, I'm misspeaking. Kilonewtons, not kips, so we've got eight kilonewtons acting down and six kilonewtons acting to the right. So that's eight kilonewtons or eight thousand newtons acting down and six thousand newtons or six kilonewtons to the right. Click the check mark and we have the loads and the restraints and placed on this structure, it's now time to run the analysis. So we will mesh and run the analysis. It takes a pretty short amount of time and we see that this is the deflected shape. So before you go much further, just ask yourself, is that what I would expect this to look like if I was pushing down at this point? I think we can see how that's a reasonable solution. Now we were asked for the reaction, so let's, let's look at those values. We right click on results, we go to list result forces, we say we want the reaction forces at this joint and this joint, you'll see those two appear in the window when we click on update and we have got little callouts that appear. So we've got 9.6 times 10 to the third newtons or 9.6 kilonewtons up at this joint and we've got negative 6 kilonewtons, so that's 6 kilonewtons to the left, and negative 1.6 kilonewtons, or 1.6 kilonewtons down. Let's compare that to the solution. So here's the solution from the same problem, and if we scroll through the solution, we see that at C we had 6 kilonewtons to the left and 1.6 kilonewtons down, 6 kilonewtons to the left and 1.6 kilonewtons down, and at B we had 9.6 kilonewtons up. And here we have 9.6 kilonewtons up. So this does a couple of things for us. Number one, it reassures us that we did our hand calculations right. And now we also have a model built that we could begin to change things. We could change the location or the magnitude of that load. We could change dimensions and we could begin to understand a little bit better how the, the reactions are affected by those other parameters. So I hope this helped, uh, helped uh, get you a little bit more comfortable using SOLIDWORKS and best wishes as you continue your engineering education.